In the small town of Reynolds, Georgia, Samuel Little was born on June 7, 1940. Born to a mother who struggled as a prostitute, Samuel's upbringing was far from conventional. His mother's challenges meant that he was raised by his grandmother. Samuel's first taste of trouble came at a young age. At just 16 years old, he was caught breaking and entering in Omaha, Nebraska. This led to his conviction and subsequent placement in juvenile detention. It was here that Samuel's rebellious spirit and tendencies began to take root, setting the tone for much of his adult life. After his release, Samuel sought a fresh start in the sunshine state of Florida. He attempted to find stability in employment, taking on various jobs including working in a cemetery and as an ambulance attendant. However, the mundane routines of these jobs failed to hold his interest for long. Samuel's thirst for excitement and his attraction to the fringes of society would soon take him on a different path. Normalcy proved to be elusive for Samuel. An insatiable desire for adventure and a penchant for living on the edge propelled him to a life of crime. He became a nomadic figure, traversing state lines and leaving a trail of misdeeds in his wake. Driven by a sense of restlessness, he went in and out of jail, his rap sheet expanding to include offences ranging from driving under the influence to fraud, shoplifting and even armed robbery. Each time Samuel was released from prison, he would seize the opportunity to reinvent himself in a new location. A cycle emerged, commit crimes, serve time, move on. With each change of scenery, his crimes escalated in intensity. At the time, law enforcement agencies in different states had minimal communication with each other. So when he would commit crimes in a new state, the prosecutors often wouldn't know about his prior convictions, allowing him to receive relatively lenient sentences. By 1970, Samuel Little's criminal trajectory had taken a chilling turn. While he had previously been involved in robberies and shoplifting, his hunger for violence had intensified to a degree that demanded a more sinister outlet. At the age of 30, he embarked on a path that would forever define him as one of history's most notorious serial killers. Little's focus shifted towards a horrifying new target, vulnerable prostitutes, many of whom were struggling with homelessness and drug addiction. He considered these victims to be less dead outcasts of society, whose disappearance wouldn't be noticed or cared about by society at large. In his distorted worldview, the act of taking a life became an expression of power and control. Manipulating his victims with the allure of money or drugs, Little would invite them into his car. The scenes of his crimes varied, oscillating between the shadows of abandoned buildings and the eerie solitude of secluded wooded areas. His car, once a mode of transportation, now transformed into a chamber of death. His method of murder always took one of two forms, strangulation or suffocation. His victims were females, usually only weighing 100 to 130 pounds, victims he could physically overpower with ease. The absence of witnesses in desolate locations meant nobody could hear the screams or cries for help. Little's calculated approach often meant the bodies were never found. They vanished without a trace, absorbed by the unforgiving landscapes that bore witness to his horrors. In the rare instances when a body was discovered, the true cause of death often remained obscured by the presence of drugs in the victim's systems. Authorities would mistakenly classify them as drug overdoses. Little's killing spree lasted for decades. He travelled across the country from Florida to Ohio to California, always leaving a trail of dead prostitutes in his wake. Samuel Little's sinister method of selecting prostitutes as his victims proved to be tragically effective, as he preyed upon those society often deemed disposable. On September 11, 1976, just four years after he started killing, officers in Missouri arrested Little for the brutal assault of Pamela Smith. Pamela managed to escape from Little's car and call the police. The evidence against Samuel Little in this case was substantial. However, the prosecutor deemed Pamela unreliable due to her status as a heroin addict. This led to a plea bargain arrangement, resulting in Little serving a mere three months. In September 1982, another life was tragically lost when 26-year-old Pamela Mount was discovered. 
lifeless and strangled in Alachua County, Florida. Eyewitnesses attested to seeing her leave an establishment in the company of Samuel Little, driving his Ford Pinto. Charged with murder, Samuel's fate seemed sealed, yet a jury declared him not guilty of the murder, leading to his release. Again, this was thanks to the witness being unreliable. One month after his release, another prostitute recounted an attempt on her life at his hands. Once again, the prosecutor chose to label the witness as unreliable and the charges were dismissed. About a decade later, in 1984, it looked like the walls were finally closing in on Samuel Little. At this time, he was living in San Diego. Two police officers were on a standard patrol and they saw Little stepping out of his vehicle in a parking lot. He was acting suspiciously, so they checked his car, where they saw Tonya Jackson beat him within an inch of her life. Little was convicted of aggravated assault, but was let out on parole just four years later due to good behaviour in prison. Upon release, he continued killing. Advancements in DNA technology led to a crucial breakthrough in bringing Samuel Little to justice. In 2012, previously unsolvable cold cases were given a new lease on life as DNA evidence began to unravel the mysteries that had long haunted investigators. One case that came to light was the murder of Audrey Nelson in 1989 in Los Angeles. Scraps of evidence, including DNA found under her fingernails, were finally matched to another victim, Carol Alford, who had suffered a similar fate in an alleyway. Both trails led to Samuel Little. The collection of Little's DNA during unrelated arrests proved to be the linchpin connecting him to these heinous acts. Coupled with the accounts of survivors, this evidence was enough to secure his conviction for the murders of three women in 2014. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Facing the grim reality of life behind bars, Little found himself with nothing left to lose. In a stark turn, he began to confess to a string of crimes, revealing that he had taken the lives of 93 women across more than 35 years in over a dozen states. With this, Samuel Little earned the distinction of being the most prolific serial killer in American history.